We're going to talk today about writing good website content and the reason for that really is that good website content is the kind of stuff that people will actually read rather than immediately click the back button to. So that's the main reason for doing it and let's go through a few tips. The first one should be obvious, it's know your subject because if you don't know your subject realistically you shouldn't actually be writing content about it, you're just waffling and what will happen is that people who come to your website will notice that, or some of them will, and they'll click the back button and probably never to return. So you need to know your subject. It doesn't take lots and lots of research. If you read, I wouldn't necessarily read a few articles because you'd need to know where the articles are sourced in the first place, uh, but certainly read a book or two about it. If it's had a good review on Amazon, you'll know your, it will fill in the blanks on your subject, but you should know your subject anyway. And as I said, the reason for articles, you'll know if you read a newspaper article or one on the web or whatever, if you know the subject, you'll pick holes in it. So you, you pick up that people don't know what you're talking about, so make sure that that doesn't happen to you. Second point I strongly suggest is write as you speak. Um, your English teacher might not agree with that, but they're not the one, you're not getting marks out of 10 for this, you're getting marks for basically passing your information on to other people and if you write as you speak people will read it that way. We're, we're quite used to reading pretty informal stuff, I, even best-selling books. So I read an author called Brett Easton Ellis and his I've written almost as though he's observing himself so that different literary styles are fine and writing as you speak works fine. People know it, they read it and we're getting less and less formal. I'm, I'm not suggesting you write as you'd send a text, so do actually include all the vowels and things like that, but certainly as, as you'd write an email or something like that, as you'd speak or write it to a friend. The next point confuses a few people. Give a few good tips and ideally actually make it your best content, the most stuff that's actually hardest to find. And the reason for that is that it just encourages people to trust you more and you'll actually find that you get higher conversions higher sales by doing that because it doesn't matter how how much you tell people it's an order of magnitude difference between knowing what you're supposed to do and actually doing it I and mean, you could probably watch a few movies mm, on plane disasters and things like that and have a rough idea of, not much of one but a rough idea of how to land a plane or fly a plane and you could certainly use something like flight simulator because it's very good at that but put you in, in the actual front of a plane you might know academically what to do, but that's about it. Uh, obviously I'm not suggesting that, but you might decide that you want to go off and practice on a flight simulator and that will still... they're available. But yeah, give your best content, we digress slightly there, give your best content, absolute best content. People will then... you'll get more links to your page or your web, wherever you put it on, the, if it's video like this one. Because people say, look, this, this person is given absolute top tip and never found it anywhere else. They must know what they're talking about and the implication is actually that because we're so used to people not giving their best content we kind of think that once we buy something off you you'll actually give them even more and you, you will because your authority passes off and you know lots of tips and tricks in your area that would take people days, weeks, months, years to learn. So don't be afraid to give your best content, it works. Next point is something I'm guilty of not doing as often as I should. Add links as appropriate. If you're mentioning a page on Wikipedia, link to it. If you're mentioning something else, link to it. It's easy to do. Um, you can make sure it doesn't overpower your blog or your website, whatever. Your techie can sort that out if you're, if you're not sure. And if you're worried about people leaving your website, just make the link open a new tab in the browser. That's um, easy done again. If you're in WordPress, it even gives you the option, do you want to do that? then it remembers it for a while afterwards. So very easy to do and that means that you... OK, they've got hundreds of tabs open, most people will have anyway, but at least it means they stand a chance of going back to your site if you're worried about that happening. And the final tip, it's not really good content, but it, it, does, it is because you, you want people to do something and that means include a call to action. It could be click here, um, there'll be one in this video, there's one somewhere around here on the screen because I'll put what's, what YouTube called an annotation on this video and it'll just be there for the whole thing which will just say click here for more info and if it's a video like this one just say well click the link below this video for more information or maybe even put a final screen up that does that. If it's an article on your website 
final line in your article is click here and give them a reason to. Typically if I'm doing edits this is the best information I've found on the subject or whatever else it happens to be. And people need a reason and they need a call to action because we're so used to doing what we're told not necessarily all the time but certainly quite a lot of the time and it saves people just being indecisive or clicking back. So if you'd like to know more click the link below this video and speak to you later. Bye.